Uh, welcome, viewers, to Invisible Ink. Uh, this is a cool little, like, futuristic cyberpunk strategy espionage game. Espionage strategy game, really. Uh, developed and published by Clay Interactive. Those guys, uh, they know what they're doing. They do good work over there. I don't... The audio's not on. Uh, let me fix that. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. It's a little bit loud in my headphones. Okay, uh... Sorry, I'm fighting off, like, the worst allergies I've ever had in my life. I'm on a lot of drugs right now, you guys. And I just sprayed all this stuff up in my nose. It's supposed to clear up congestion. I don't know. It mostly just ran back out. I don't think it's working. Uh, <clears throat> so I apologize if I sound nasally. But Invisible Ink. Tactical espionage. Get it, Invisible Ink. Like, Invisible Ink. Yeah. Uh, this is very exciting. I love this game. You guys, I've played, I've played a lot of this game. And I think I'm reasonably good at it. And today is... The 10th anniversary of the founding of Clay Entertainment, I guess, according to this thing I saw on Steam. Um, and as part of celebrating that anniversary, they released a DLC pack for this game that includes uh, an extended campaign mode and some new characters and uh, AI upgrades and stuff. And I'm very excited because this game rules. So let's just, let's play some game. Let's play some game and I'll explain it. Let's ignore these other things. Play story. Uh, we're going to play on Expert. Normal Expert. What's the difference? Expert Plus is super hard. We're going to play Normal Expert. <coughs> so I'll let you watch this. Get to the main server, collect the data, and get out. No detours. Copy that, Central. Proceeding to target. Oh. The art in Clay's games is always great. Level holding steady. We need to get to the third floor. We can make our way to the server room from there. Any chatter on the comms? Negative. It's silent on all frequencies. They should have detected us by now. Proceeding priority They're on to you. Going to need an extraction. I've got incognito. Deckard and International are on their way. Get to the roof. I'll cover you. Go! Decker, how long till extraction? 30 seconds. Get us out of here. We've got work to do. Okay, so that's the intro. Uh, <clears throat> your huge international spy organization has fallen apart somebody figured something out or there's a mole or who knows what you know how these things go uh, and you have you have to sort of rebuild from the ashes a little bit and figure out what what happened how you got found out so you get to start the game with two agents and two programs for your magic hacking computer uh, so there's some new characters. Let's have a look what at these. What can I say? 
When it comes to covert infosec operations, I know more than any living human being on the planet. This is not boasting, it's an undeniable fact, bought with long, hard decades of experience. We could have won the war, I still believe that. But our early efforts were hamstrung by incompetent leadership that refused to accept the severity of the situation. When the director finally realized how bad it was, he defected to the corpse. I took over and made it our first priority to recapture him before he gave away too many of our operational secrets. I pulled the trigger myself, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Okay, so, uh... <clears throat> You see here, for most of the agents, there's an on-file version and an archive version. Um, so this first, this first new character that's been added is the uh, archive version of the boss of Invisible Ink, I guess. Uh, Derek puts on an air of self-interest, but he's got more skin in this game than he's willing to admit. He saw the nasty side of corporate power as an orphan back in Manchester, and he's never forgotten it. He's able to put some of those feelings aside for the sake of business, but when the chips are really down, he can still be counted upon. When I was captured, the agency wrote me off. I don't blame them. Not many people walk out of a deprogramming chamber the same person they went in as. But Derek kept looking. He tracked down the facility where they were holding me and was able to remotely hijack a nanofab within. A single neural disruptor in the right hands at the right time can make all the difference in the world. Alright, so this guy, <clears throat> you saw him briefly during the intro cinematic. He's, uh, in the main game, he's known as Monster. This is his archive version, his younger version. Looks a little bit like, um, Richard Ayoade, actually. Uh, and then there's these two. Draco's methods were certainly unconventional, and I took heat for recruiting him. But what my superiors failed to understand was that we were not fighting a conventional war, and we could not afford to limit ourselves to conventional tactics. The corporations had deeper pockets than we did, and were wholly unaccountable to the system of international justice. I didn't have the luxury of restraint. I was charged with interdicting the enemy's security operations as efficiently as possible, and if bad things happen to a couple of their corpses along the way, I make no apologies. Someday I'll get around to his silly vampire book. Who has time to read nowadays, anyway? <clears throat> so there's a surprising amount of voice work in the game. That's certainly true. Paulette was headstrong, aggressive, unpredictable, arrogant, hard to work with, and absolutely worth the trouble. She was the master of the smash and grab. No agent that I've worked with since could match her speed and ferocity in the field. In hindsight, this was probably her undoing. And I maintain better discipline amongst the PEIA agents. We may not have lost the Istanbul run. All right. So every character um, has an inventory in which they can carry items, and then augment slots where you can install uh, cybernetics. You know, standard transhumanist sci-fi stuff. Um, so everybody starts with some things. We're going to use these two because they're the new characters and I'm curious. Uh, so let's see what they got. Neural Pattern Grid. He cannot upgrade his skills. But. Huh. That's interesting. You can't buy skill upgrades for him. Normally you'd be able to upgrade his skills with uh, money between missions. But apparently he has to like... He has to take his skill upgrades from downed guards. Um, the significance of the difference between knocked out guards and dead guards is that uh, it's, first of all, it's difficult to kill people in this game. Uh, lethal weapons are... <clears throat> they can be hard to come by. He starts with one, it looks like. But you can see in the upper right there, it has one ammo, and uh, that's not a that's not a clip infinite reloads kind of thing. The gun can shoot once, and then in order to fire it again ever, you have to get a, a recharge pack, uh, which you either have to scavenge off of a guard, which is pretty rare, or you'd have to buy with a significant amount of money. 
That's interesting, though. Uh, and then he's got a Neural Disruptor, which is like a taser. Almost every agent starts with a Neural Disruptor of some kind. Uh, this is pretty standard. And then what do we got over here? Uh, sprinting gives plus one KO damage and plus one armor piercing. Um, you'll understand why that's significant once we start actually playing the game. That seems very difficult to work with. And a standard Neural Disruptor. And a Stim Cocktail. Okay, well... These these both seem like very difficult agents to use. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll try it. Alright, so your, uh, your computer programs, your starting programs, are sort of divided into two groups. Uh, the top program provides power which you expend whenever you want to hack stuff. <clears throat> uh, so you can see the basic one is just you gain a power each turn. And then they get a little fancier. Um, this one costs you power to use and gains you power. Um, it costs 5 power, but gains you 12 power um, over time. This one doesn't actually give you any power, but it makes your first program usually free each turn. Let's tricky stuff. So let's see, the new one is uh, it has a two turn cooldown, it costs nothing, you gain three power and your agents get AP uh, but your agents have significantly reduced AP while it's on cooldown. That, man, that is a bummer. And then there's one new uh, the second program uh, breaks through firewalls, it allows you to hack into corporate stuff and like uh, you can hack through the security, the firewalls on um electronically secured safes so that you can get into the safe and steal things. You can hack through the security on a camera to take over the camera feed. <clears throat> uh, Alright, we're gonna try... This looks super hard. We're gonna try all new stuff, but I don't know how we're gonna do this. <clears throat> yeah, so it's 2074 and corporations rule the world with brutal efficiency. It's possible that you're familiar with, uh, with media based on this conceit. This is important. You need to strike back, but you'll never win by force, and the odds are stacked against you. That is my phone. I should probably turn that off while I'm recording. Um, <clears throat> the odds are stacked against you. If you fight corporations head-on, you will lose. Their resources are infinite, effectively. <clears throat> and at this point, you're, you know, three people in a plane with whatever guns and money you had on you when you left, so. Operator, are you there? Good. I was afraid you didn't make it out. Headquarters is gone. Most of our agents have been captured or killed, and our accounts all frozen. I don't know how the corporations found us, but you can bet they won't give up now that they've had a taste of blood. The jet stealth rig should keep us hidden if we keep moving, but Incognita can't survive long on backup power. She's got 72 hours tops. We need to mount a counterattack before then, or we'll be defenseless against their scams. If that happens, we may as well just crash this thing into the ocean. You've never seen the inside of a corporate deprogramming chamber. I won't see the inside of another. Incognita is scanning for targets of opportunity where we can replenish our supplies. Follow her leads and gather what resources you can. I'll run through our contacts and see what favors I can call in. We're going to need all of the advantages we can find in the coming days. Alright, so if it wasn't clear, <clears throat> Incognita is the crazy magic computer hacking AI that runs all of the all of the technical operations of Invisible Ink. So this is our starting loadout. We know that already. All right. Executives are notoriously slack when it comes to network security, and their terminals are full of interesting information. We found a lightly guarded executive complex here. Get in, find the computer, and steal their contact list. Then we'll have our pick of future targets. All right, here we go. So we're going to break into this facility. We're going to break into this facility. We're going to lift this uh, executive guy's contact list, and we're going to use the people on that contact list as targets for future heists. We're going to try to build up enough money and weapons 
to make a, uh, a an assault on whatever corp facility we find is responsible for figuring out where we are. I don't know, the plan's all kind of hazy right now. We're just trying to survive. Bad news, Operator. They caught us completely by surprise, so we have no firepower with us. The guards' weapons are gene-coded to their owner and useless to us. We're going to have to make do with what we can find along the way. We've beamed you through the security grid. You should be somewhere near the target, but you'll need to look for it. Get the list and find a transport pad to escape. But be quick about it. They noticed a disturbance when we ported in, and their alarm level is already rising. Yep, yeah, that sure is the case. Okay, locate the executive terminal terminals, don't die, secondary objectives, steal everything that's not nailed down. These are all important things. Okay, so you can see, uh... Our agents have action points. Every turn you can uh, you can do actions. Moving one space costs one action point, so we're going to take our eight action point agent and move him over next to this door. We're going to take this one and have her look over here. I suspect, yeah, it's a dead end. Okay. We're going to have her wait here. Um, you can see she's crouched against this cover. So she's in partial cover. I don't know what's, what's on the other side of this door, just in case I want to be careful. So we can spend an action point to peek through a closed door. I don't see anything. Let's just open the door and have a... Uh, you can have a better peek when the door is open. Uh, but things that are... People that are on the other side of the door will notice when the door opens. We're just going to end the turn. We're, we're going to play it slow. Footsteps. Yep, the teleport into the building caused a power surge. They know something's up. So the security level is going to increase by one at the beginning of each turn uh, until we get out of here. So we are on the clock. We gotta make this quick. All right, this is the incognito view. You can see here the uh, the mainframe objects that we can see, things that are connected to the corporate security network. We could we can uh, cast our cast our spells. We can use our programs, is what I'm trying to say. It's definitely not magic, you guys. It's totally uh, totally science, is what's happening right here. Um, so we have ten power. If we use this, we'll gain 3 power, and we'll gain 3 AP this turn, but we'll have 3 AP net less next turn and the turn after. This is a tricky one. We need to be really careful with this. Uh, I do want to hack this safe, so we're going we're gonna to spend 2 of our power to pop this safe. Come out of the incognito view. So he only has one AP left. We're going to use it to observe this guard's movement. You can kind of, you can get an idea of what they're going to do next turn. Alright. We'll run her up. We'll close the door here. She's going to split off the other way. Because of the time limitation imposed by the security level, we really want to find our target uh, as quickly as possible. That means splitting up, uh, which can become dangerous, you know. Our agents are not... Let's peek through here. Ooh, okay. So we know that this location is being watched by the enemy. If we opened that door to get a better peek, something would see. I'm going to crack this safe because I am going to have this guy steal from it this turn. So, if I hold Alt, I can get what's called the tactical view, which basically just strips all the graphics down and shows you the actual game entities. Uh, so you can see partial cover uh, is represented by these, like, half-height little blocks. Um, I will be popping into and out of tactical view a lot. I apologize if that's confusing. You know, we're going to use our power program now. 
I'm gonna crack this safe as well. So remember our uh, our our firewall breaking program uh, reduces in cost every turn, but if it's uh, if I use it, it goes back to its full cost of four. So we're actually gonna we're gonna steal from this safe. This is that guy, right? He's just gonna do that. Okay, so. Oh dear. Uh oh. There's some vision over here. I think it's probably a camera. Uh. Yeah, we're just gonna take cover behind this uh, section of wall. He won't see us here. Now we're gonna have to take advantage of her thing as well. Um, I'm gonna use all these, all this AP that we have here to steal from this safe. I really should have just had her run up here before going over there in the first place, because now we've sort of wasted a turn. Um, all right, so now we're now we're artificially slowed by the. Uh, by the cooldown, by the cooldown of our burst spell, spell, program. It's a program. It's science, you guys. We're just gonna have him <clears throat> wait up here against this wall. Hmm. So when that guard patrols back, we know that his patrol path now is that he walks down here and then walks back up here. When that guard patrols back, we may be able to sneak around him. Uh, I'm gonna step out here and do a peek to get eyes on that guard because I didn't I don't remember the I did not remember the square that he stops in at this end of the path so he actually does not have you can see his cone of vision kind of uh, he does not have good vision here so we could hide uh, right up against the wall like right there uh, after he patrols away and that is our plan. So you can see here, I'm trying to be real safe, I'm trying not to get seen, and uh, playing safe and slow and not getting seen is wasting a lot of time. We're almost, uh, we're almost at the next security level. Uh-oh. Oh my god, he has so few AP when, uh, when our golem thing is on cooldown. This sucks. I knew this was going to be hard. Okay, we're going to run over here and then and close the door. And she... Did you see that? Yeah, we're gonna get... Oh, this is a dead end. Okay. My plan was to have her... Um, to have her open this door and when this guy comes by to do... Crazy spy kung fu on him. But... Now that it, this really looks like a dead end, and I don't particularly care to go in there... Uh, so we're actually just going to have her run away and hide. It's always best not to get seen. Getting seen causes problems. Alright, so as you can see, the next security level gain will fill up the circle. Our security level will change from 0 to 1, and every time the number, every time you fill up the circle and the number increases, there's some kind of uh, terrible thing happens. Uh, so when we reach security level 1... Nothing. Yeah, the corporation is activating additional cameras. Uh, so about half of the cameras on the map start in a deactivated state. Uh, and we have now... We have now have caused them to be activated. Okay, that guy's not going to see us, right? Uh... Maybe, maybe not. Alright. This might be dumb. I might I might have done a dumb thing here. When he walks down, yeah, he might... Mm, I'm not happy about this. Uh, should we shoot him? I'm going to end turn and see what happens. He may not see us pressed up against the wall like that. Okay, he didn't see us. We don't want to interact with the guards at all if we can avoid it. Let's peek the door. Oh. Alright. 
Well, we will do that then. So there's two, uh, there's two parts to our mission, right? Number one is that we want to get in here and hack this terminal. Uh, number two is that we need to get out of here alive. Right. We're going to run up here. Steal from this safe. Get on the other side of this door. Close the door. Alright, All right, we haven't used our golem in such a long time that it's gone all the way down to zero power costs, so we are now going to use it to crack the firewalls on that terminal. We'll let the cost start cooling down again. Uh, so there's two parts to our mission. We gotta get this thing, and then we gotta get out. Every, uh, every corporate building has a teleporter. On every floor, apparently. Uh, we gotta find their teleporter and use it. So here's that site list that we came looking for. Great. When you activated that terminal, it sent out an automated message to change up the guard duty. Be prepared for new patrol patterns. Great. Uh, we're just going to have her run over here and crouch next to the door. Uh, there's a door right here, signified by this yellow line on the tactical view. Alright, peek through the door. Oh, we cannot see anything. Alright, get up against the wall over here. Uh, we'll close the door. Alright. Let's see, this little object is a mainframe terminal, and we can steal power from the corporate power grid by interacting with these. Uh, so we're going to do that. Four power is really an extremely large number. You usually do not, uh, do not get anywhere near that much. Right, we're going to hack that. He's going to take cover against the wall, and she's going to use her last action point to peek through the door. This is going remarkably smoothly. Uh, hmm. We have a lot of vision. I don't know why I did that. The, uh, the plan there was to open the door and get a better level of peek uh, through the open door, but she didn't have any AP left. I knew she couldn't do that. Okay, so there's a camera in here. And a safe, and that's it. Which means that the exit elevator is... Oh, this room isn't a dead end. There's a door here. Sure sure as hell is, plain as day. Okay, that's a problem. Hmm. So, this corporate safe has a lot of extra security on it. Probably, there's something cool in there. At the very least, extra money. Uh, more money than a normal safe, but it would be very expensive to hack this. It has three firewalls on it, and our hacking program only breaks two firewalls when used. So we'd have to hack it twice, which at the moment would cost us seven power. That is a crazy amount of power. Um, shoot, man. I think we're going to have to skip it. Uh, we will lift the stuff from this safe that we already hacked, 120 credits. That's just free money. Uh, we are going to ignore this safe. I don't I don't want to mess with it. I'm a little concerned about uh, those changed up guard patrols. Alright, and we've... So you can see every object that has firewalls on it has gained an additional firewall. Uh, that's not a big deal. We're, we're alright. So it looks like the way out is over here. Uh, we're going to have to take out that camera to get there safely. Let's just crouch against this uh, piece of corporate statuary. Uh-oh. This guy might be coming to investigate the terminal. Oh, he is... Uh-oh. Okay. So the fact that he saw one of our agents gave the uh, security level a little boost. We gotta deal with this guy now. 
Uh, the corporate guards all have heart monitors. So if we kill him, uh, the alarm level will increase by, I think it's three. We'll immediately jump up to the next alert level. We could just zap him, but if we kill him, we can use this neural pattern thing and uh, gain a skill point permanently. It will cost us our only bullet. I, mm, we're just going to KO him. Alright, so obviously, uh, that really only works if they spot you from the space adjacent to you. Uh, if, if I had tried to move this unit or do anything else with him other than immediately subdue the guard, the guard would have shot us. Uh, let's scan him. Item cooldown bonus one turn. Okay, so that reduced the cooldown on our neural disruptor for a turn. Uh, so you can see this guy's knocked out for two turns. As long as we have somebody parked on top of him, that cooldown doesn't decrease. It's called pinning. We are not going to take advantage of the pinning. We are going to haul ass. We are getting out of here. Uh, I just get in the habit of closing doors behind me whenever I can because it abbreviates sight lines for the guards. Alright, so that guy's going to wake up in a couple of turns and things are going to get real sketchy. Oh, who is this? This is a new pattern. Um... He's just going to patrol right back out, and his view cone is completely obstructed. He parked himself right up against this structural pillar for some reason. So we're just going to completely evade him. Hey, did you see that? Uh, he saw the door open in his peripheral vision. Now he's going to go investigate the door, but he hasn't actually turned, so he still can't see... These guys are hilariously inept. Okay, so this is, um... This is maybe bad. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, I was concerned that he might have, uh... Started looking around erratically and turned to face this way, in which case we'd be stuck. Pretty much, uh, crouching behind this, uh, cart. Uh, we're going to hack the security camera. That's going to give us a live feed of what's going on in that room. Looks pretty safe. Uh, yeah, looks perfectly safe. Okay. We're going to close the door. This is not ideal. I was just trying to get out of there because that guy's going to behave a little unpredictably now. But uh, if somebody comes through that door, we might be in a little bit of trouble. So you can hear him moving around. Alright, we are going to continue to evade. I think Incognita's got the right idea. Uh, we are going to crack this thing. This is a nanofabricator. You know, like those things from Star Trek. Uh, we can use it to exchange credits for cool stuff. This charge pack, this is what we need to refill the ammo on that gun if we fire it. The cooker is a one ammo ranged weapon with armor piercing one. That's probably not worth 700 credits. This effect triggers after this agent successfully knocks out an enemy, so if whenever you tase somebody, gain 6 AP. That's actually pretty good. We're gonna get. We're gonna buy this augment for her. We're gonna install it right away. Uh, and then we're gonna buy med gel. If a guard shoots one of your agents, this will bring that agent back to life. It is a useful thing to have around. It's nice to have one med gel on somebody. All right, let's so run over here. Peek the door. Oh, a terminal. That's lovely. Is there any cover inside this room that he can get to? No. Yeah, 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 right here. Right. We're gonna move her through the door, close the door behind us. Yep. Alright, 
Things are going pretty smoothly. Uh, we can hear a patroller. Uh, this door here, this red door, uh, red means locked. Fortunately, we stole a security pass card from the guy we knocked out, who I'm sure by this point has woken up and is in a very bad mood. That room looks like it could be a dead end. Hmm. Let's peek this door. We have vision in there too, huh? This is a... Uh, hmm. Let's unlock this door and peek it. We know there's a guard in there somewhere. We are going to steal two power from this console. That seems like a good idea. Hmm. We're going to pass the turn. Okay, so we know there's another door there. Hmm. The fact that the lines of sight here and here change not at all leads me to believe that they're uh, due to cameras. Humans mostly move around. Aha! In fact, just one camera even. Alright, so we know that guy's going to patrol back into this room. Uh, this power supply is what's making this laser grid work. If we didn't have the key card allowing us to get through this door, we might actually have to deal with this laser grid to sneak around here since that guy is moving through this room all the time. But our stolen key card is going to let us obviate this obstacle without having to expend the power necessary to hack the thing. Alright, so we're going to have her take cover here. He's going to peek in this door. Yeah, okay, that room has nothing in it. This door over here is almost certainly the way out. So the guard's going to come through. But we're all sneaky. The guards can move through the lasers anytime they want. Uh, and given that, you would think they would be more alarmed when you turn the lasers off, but no, they don't seem to care at all. Okay, awesome. This is the exit elevator. This went very smoothly. I don't actually have the AP to make it into the elevator this turn. But uh, you can't really ask for a cleaner mission than that. We're not exactly ghosts. That one guard totally saw us, but... Everybody in? Excellent work, Operator. Now to sift through the data and find the juiciest targets. Alright, unconditional victory there. Looks like we uh, we missed a safe. Somewhere there was a safe that we didn't crack. Um, yeah. Nobody died. We didn't use any uh, non-renewable resources. And we got some cool stuff. Okay. So on Rush here, we can upgrade her skills. There are four skills that every agent has uh, by spending credits. Draco, of course, cannot have his skills upgraded in this way because of his neural pattern thingy. Uh, speed just gives you extra AP for movement. Uh, hacking makes you gain extra power when you uh, steal power from the corporate grid with the consoles. That can be useful because depending on your, uh, depending on your incognito program's power can be kind of annoying to come by. Uh, strength lets you carry more items. Uh, knocked out guards can be dragged around, knocked out or killed guards can be dragged around, and uh, strength increases your drag speed. Uh, and if you get it all the way up, it makes all your melee weapons uh, knock guards out for one extra turn. I've never done that, it's a lot of credits for that effect. And Anarchy lets you pickpocket guards, and at max level, it gives you an increased chance to find items when you uh, steal from guards and saves. So what does he got? He's got an extra point of strength, so yeah, he has an extra inventory slot. Actually, um, we're going to pass the med gel over to him. Don't want to upgrade her skills at all. 
Yeah, we're gonna give her the ability to pickpocket guards from behind. Sometimes. I've reestablished contact oh, hold on. with the monster. His network picked up the attack just before it hit us, and we're working to trace it back to the source. In the meantime, he's offered to sell us some of his more rarefied stock. Greetings. I don't often perform transactions face to face, but Gladstone is an old friend. I'll contact you when anything becomes available. Thank you, monster. If we find their central server, we may be able to bring them down, or at least distract them long enough that they lose our trail. Continue scavenging operations, and I'll keep you posted as more intel develops. Yep, so you can see we've unlocked some, uh, some new missions now. This is the results of that thing we stole. So, uh, we'll go into that next time. I think this is probably long enough for one video. Uh, so I'll see you then.